What's up guys? Welcome to my mobile browser war. In this test, we will be using the new iPad 4th generation running Safari browser. I will also be using the Microsoft Surface tablet running Internet Explorer 10. And for Android, I will be using Google Chrome and also as an alternate browser, Dolphin browser, since it is one of the most popular browsers out there for Android. So what are we going to do? We're going to put these guys through benchmarks, but most importantly, we're going to put them through a performance test to see which one comes out on top. So let's get started. In my HTML5 test, Safari on the iPad got a 386 out of 500. The Microsoft Surface tablet with Internet Explorer got a 313 out of 500. Nexus 10 running Dolphin browser got us a 296 out of 500. And Google Chrome 390 out of 500. Now moving on to my fish tank test. The Safari browser 20 fish was getting us 60 frames per second. 100 fish did not slow it down keeping it at 60 frames per second. 250 fish was still a healthy 57 frames per second. Now on the Surface tablet with 20 fish, we were getting about 48 frames per second. When we bumped it up to 100 fish, we were getting about 40 FPS. Bumping it up to 250 slowed it down a little bit, but we were still getting a respectable 30 FPS. On Dolphin, 20 fish was just not too well at 22. 100 fish really slowed it down to about 13 frames per second. And 250 fish was just too much to handle, bringing it to a very slow 7 FPS. Google Chrome did better with 20 fish at 46 frames per second. 100 fish brought it down to 38 frames per second. 250 fish still got us at about 30 frames per second, which was really well. Now we're going to go ahead and load a website like The Verge. All cache have been cleared on all browsers. We'll start off with Safari getting us a six second uh, time. Let's move on to the Microsoft Surface tablet running Internet Explorer. Now we will be doing a portrait test also, but this one is in landscape mode. The website completed in nine seconds. Now let's move on to the Nexus 10 running Dolphin browser. I do want to point out that all of these tablets were connected to the same Wi-Fi network, but I wanted to run them individually to do a fair comparison. If I run them all at the same time, sometimes one leeches more off the other, so I'd figure this would be the fairest test. The Dolphin browser finished in at 19 seconds, and let's see where Google Chrome can finish at. Hopefully, we, it could be a little bit faster, as that was pretty disappointing on the Dolphin browser. And it's still loading on the top left. You can see the little circle spinning, and hopefully it's just about done. And it finishes up at 15 seconds. Let's go ahead and load in Gadget a different website and see what the iPad Safari does. And it finishes off at 4 seconds, which was very impressive. Let's move on to the Surface running Internet Explorer. I did switch the tablets to portrait mode. And it's going to finish off at 8 seconds. Moving on to the Dolphin browser on the Nexus 10. And that finishes off at 4 seconds, which was really good. And let's move on to the Nexus 10 again with Google Chrome and see if it can beat. Nope, not four seconds going up. And it finishes off at nine seconds. Here are the results. HTML5 test, Google Chrome 390. In our fish test, when we ran 20 fish, Safari got 60 frames per second. When we bumped it up to 100 fish, it did not slow down and kept it at 60 FPS. 250 fish just brought it down and Safari won again with 58 FPS. When we did our TheVerge.com load test, Safari won at 6 seconds and we had a tie with Engadget on Safari and Dolphin. Now let's go ahead and put these tablets side by side. As you can see, the Microsoft Surface tablet allows you to see a lot more because of its aspect ratio compared to the iPad and the Nexus 10. If you pay attention down here on the Nexus 10 and iPad compared to the Surface tablet, you are able to see a lot more. Now let's go ahead and see how Google Chrome looks. And it's pretty much the same if you pay attention down there. It pretty much looks identical to the Dolphin browser and there is really no difference as far as when you're viewing them. 
Let's go ahead and look at scrolling. Let's try with the iPad first. And one, two, two flicks. As you can see, there are missing images. So there, it does take a while to render all of the images once again. So let's see how many flicks it takes. One, and there's a missing images, two. So it looks like two flicks. Let's go ahead and try on the surface. One, one flick, that's all it took. One up, one down, no rendering issues, buttery smooth. Let's go ahead and try the Nexus 10 and let's see which browser. We're doing the Dolphin browser and there are some rendering issues. It does take one flick though, one flick up, one flick down and again there are some, it does take some time to render. Let's go ahead and try Google Chrome. Go ahead and flick, oh wow, that is very bad, terrible. And let's go ahead and move up. Okay, a lot better. And it seems once everything is loaded, it works a lot better, but uh, I would say it's not better than the Surface. Let's go ahead and try Pinch to Zoom on the iPad. Very smooth, as expected. Nice. Let's go ahead and move on to the Surface. And I would say is as good, if not better, than the iPad. Now let's go ahead and do the Dolphin browser. And it's pretty good. It's okay. It's not as good as the iPad or Surface. Let's see how the Chrome browser does. And it's not as sticky as the iPad or Surface, but it's actually not that bad. Let's go ahead and look at scrolling again in landscape mode, each individual tablet. One, two, three. So it takes about three to four times. One, two, and three. Looks like about three or four flicks to get to the bottom of the page. One, two, three, four. Yep, three or four. Let's go ahead and look at the Surface. One, two, and three. So it looks like three flicks. Let's go ahead and go up. One, two, and three. Yep, three flicks, very smooth. Let's go ahead and look at the Dolphin browser now. And let's see how many flicks. One, and whoa, it almost got to the very bottom. Bit of rendering issues, but it did take one time. And I really like that dynamic scrolling on the Dolphin browser, even though it does have some rendering issues. Let's go ahead and look at Google Chrome and see how it does. And let's go ahead and do a flick. One, ooh, very, very bad. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get to the bottom here. Two, three, so it's not as good as the Dolphin browser and clearly not as good as the Microsoft Surface or Safari. And it does take quite a bit of flicking to get to the top and bottom of the page. Now let's go ahead and look at pinch to zoom on text as this may be important to you when you're looking at websites. And as you can see on the iPad, this is pretty much as far as we can zoom in. I can't go any further. And let's go ahead and look at the Microsoft Surface. So as you can see, there's a huge difference. And this may be a plus on the Surface that you can, even though it does not have a retina display, you can see the text a little bit better. And you can't zoom in. Well, you can, you have to double tap. And we'll talk about that in a second. We'll go ahead and look at Chrome, same thing. You're not able to pinch to zoom on the website. Let's go ahead and look at double tapping now. Let's go ahead and try and put all of these at the same place so you can see more or less. Double tap on the iPad, so more or less. It gives you an idea of how much zoom you can expect. And let's go ahead and try that on Google Chrome and you'll notice that nothing happens. Double tap does not work on Google Chrome. But once you double tap on the Dolphin browser, it does allow you to pinch to zoom and you can see the difference between all three of them and as you can see on the surface you're able to see it a lot bigger now let's go ahead and zoom into an image so I've loaded the Apple website and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys also how well text looks an image text not an actual text that's being rendered by the browser and you can see the difference already with the surface compared to the iPad it looks a lot more fuzzier Go ahead and zoom in all the way over here. Now one thing to know, look at the very top where it says iPad and look at the difference and you could really tell on the Nexus 10 how awesome that display looks. Let's go ahead and look at the uh, Google Chrome browser and look at that. If you notice on the iPad, it looks very fuzzy compared to the one on the Dolphin browser. A lot smoother. Go ahead and take a look at that. Just something to take note of. So here is a uh, Facebook loaded and I want to show you guys once again how scrolling and pinch to zoom side by side. So you can see on the iPad first pinch to zoom works really well. Very smooth scrolling but the Surface tablet to me seems to be a lot smoother than the iPad. And feel free to rewind so you can see how smooth the Surface tablet really is. 
Now let's go ahead and move over to the Nexus 10. A lot smoother than before. And of course, this could be because of the website. So very smooth. Actually, all of them are very smooth. Go ahead and try Google Chrome. And it's really, really good. No problems at all. Let's go ahead and uh, pinch to zoom. Not a glitch at all. So it's really going to depend on the website. But as you can see, on something like Facebook, so if you're on Facebook a lot, you can expect really good smooth scrolling on basically all uh, four browsers. So I do like the dynamic scrolling on the Android device a lot better compared to the Surface and iPad. So who won? Well, if we go by benchmarks, the iPad was the clear winner, hands down. However, when we get to real world usage, in other words, the user experience, I would have to say the Internet Explorer on the Surface tablet was hands down the best. It offered really smooth scrolling, websites render really fast compared to all browsers, and of course, pinch to zoom was really, really good. Now, we have to pick a winner. Do we pick one, a winner by benchmarks, or do we pick one by real world user experience? So this is a really tough one, but I have to pick a winner, and that winner is the Safari browser, mainly because it didn't fall too short from Internet Explorer, and given the fact that Safari did very well in benchmarks, I have to give the winner to Safari. But this is just the beginning of many more tests that I do plan on doing. Uh, in my next test, I plan on doing user experience and other features and functionalities that browsers have to offer. Clearly, this is just a performance test, so there's many more other factors that do count or matter or may matter to you. So feel free to uh, leave your comments down below and let me know what kind of uh, future tests you guys want to see. If you guys like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and let your friends and family know about my channel. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you want to follow me on Google Plus and Twitter, I've left that link below. Once again, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Adios.